Um, there's been, you know, talk a few years ago about the player experience, and Jeff went back, reevaluated re everything that, that they were doing here, and we've made a lot of changes that are to the benefit of the players in terms of changing the schedule up, changing the medical process, but not being pulled on by four and five doctors now. We've got that process streamlined and um, created a uh, recovery room for the guys. So, um, you know, I know it's up for bid in 2025, but I'm very hopeful, and a lot of my colleagues are hopeful that it stays here in uh, Indianapolis. So with that, I will open it up to questions. Yeah, well, the, what, what was talked about a couple of years ago was the amount of stress that was put on these guys and how long their days were. Um, and what it really allows them to, to do, I think, is be their best self in the interview process, as well as the on the field process, that they're not tired. Um, last year, a lot was made of the fact that we had the bench on the same day as the 40s. So a lot of guys did not do the bench last year for that reason. So now they changed it. So the bench is the day after the on-field workout. So those kinds of things allow the players to perform at, at their absolute best, which is what we want and what the players and their agents want as well. Given the tracking data, how much that's coming to leave, how much do you still value sort of traditional era time? Yeah, we value all that. Um, it's all a piece of the puzzle. I mean, you can't just put it on one thing, like a 40 time or you know, height, weight, speed. There's so many variables involved. Uh, the tracking data is, is obviously very, very helpful. Uh, but the 40 times we look at that because it's uniform. Everybody's running on the same service on the same on the same day. All the DB group the same day. All linebackers same day, same surface. So it's not like the different pro days where you have different types of surfaces, uh, different conditions. Some guys are outside, some guys are on grass, and, and some guys are inside on turf or different types of turf. Um, so it just gives us one standard and we can see who ran faster on that particular day, you know, which is helpful to us in terms of gathering accurate information. Mark Bird, a young quarterback like Sam, the fact that he's been able to basically sit all of last year, whereas a lot of rookies, higher picks get thrust into that lap, how much do you think that benefits the quarterbacks a lot versus is, is part of the problem with developing guys sending them into the push? I think that is a tremendous, tremendous value. I don't think it's any any uh, coincidence that Aaron Rodgers and Pat Mahomes are two of the best quarterbacks in the league. And they had the benefit of being able to sit behind a quality quarterback, sit and learn for some period of time. I'm obviously not saying that Sam is those guys right now, but I'm saying that I think that there's a lot of benefit to coming in without that immediate pressure every single week to learn a different game plan, to play against a different team, uh, to play a longer season than you ever played in your whole life. Uh, with grown men um, and different schemes that you're seeing you haven't seen before. Um, I think that's one of the things as a league that we really, where we really have failed is in developing quarterbacks. And the reason for that, I believe, is because, you know, the bad teams get to pick first. Uh, they pick a very talented quarterback. Sometimes their team is not that talented. Uh, then they have that immediate pressure to put that player on the field. Uh, and so many guys have failed for that reason. So I think it's very, it's going to help Sam a lot. Yeah, well, I think you see a lot more multiple defensive schemes. So you see schemes that run, you know, um, you know, 34 defenses, then they morph into a 4-3. We have what we call our single package, which is five down linemen. Um, so you're seeing uh, people able to put different pieces in different spots to make the most of what their skill set is. Um, so I think that benefits some of these guys that are declared as tweeners. Are they defensive tackles or defensive ends? Are they outside linebackers or, or, or edge players, you know, uh, pass rushers? Uh, I think it benefits those guys when you have so many schemes that are multiple, and we find in multiple uses of guys to be able to maximize their skill set. I think that's something you got to think about. But, you know, I, one of the biggest mistakes I made in my career was assuming that Aaron Donald was too small, you know. And a lot of people thought that. Twelve other teams thought the same thing because he went 13th. Um, but obviously, you got to take into consideration what measurables that you want and desire, but you also have to look at what a guy can do, what they're capable of doing. Um, and um, clearly, you, you can't make a decision based off that, I don't think. You got to watch the tape, evaluate who that guy is, get to know that person as a, get to know that player as a person, 
um, and make an ultimate decision of what he can contribute to your team despite what his measurables are. Yeah, honestly, this year we have not done a lot of deal talking. Uh, at, at this point, we have several agent meetings uh, that we're doing, meeting with some of the agents from some of our players. Um, but uh, it varies from year to year. If you have somebody who you're trying to move or if you have somebody who you've targeted on a different team that you're trying to get, you know, you spend a lot of time on that. Uh, this year so far, I haven't spent much time on that. Yeah, um, that was 1988. That was a long time ago. So I don't remember a whole heck of a lot about it. I remember I ran pretty good. I remember I got seven reps on the bench. I was pretty embarrassed <laughs> about that. Um, but yeah, it's changed a lot since then, and for the better, I think. Um, I think uh, the interview process has changed a lot, which has been really, really beneficial as far as getting to know these guys. Um, having the opportunity to do that. Um, a lot of the other data that we collect now, we didn't collect back then. A lot of psychological testing that we're able to do now, we didn't do back then. It's gotten a lot better, a lot more sophisticated, obviously a lot more people here. Uh, now you have fans there and, uh, you know, obviously a lot more of you guys here as well. Uh, before, I think the goal was initially to get medical information and then do a little on-field workout and, and get to know these guys a little bit. Um, it hasn't changed dramatically in terms of the goals, but the, the method to get to those answers has changed a lot, and it's a lot more efficient. Yeah, Senior Bowl has been outstanding. Jim Nagy's done an incredible job uh, getting that uh, revamped and uh, resituated. Their interview process has been incredible. We get to talk to every single guy that's there, which is really helpful uh, for us. Um, and every year I go to the Senior Bowl, since I've been going for the last 20 years or whatever, there's always a guy or two that catches your eye that you haven't seen before or don't know as much about. Um, thinking back um, to, I think it was 2014 or 15, um, I think it was 15, it was the year we drafted Lake and Thomason. Um, there was a, a corner safety there that I didn't know hardly anything about. I knew his name and that was pretty much it. But he had an incredible week of practice. Um, we ended up taking that guy uh, in the six rounds, Quandre Diggs. We ended up being an all-pro. Um, and he caught my eye at the Senior Bowl. So I think there's a lot of benefit for players to go there. Um, and we certainly derive a lot of benefit from it. Yeah, well, you know, we're still working through that process with Eric. He's only been there for a couple of days. I've seen him in the office, I think, two days. Um, and I just saw him at, at the hotel uh, a while back. So we're, we're, we're still evolving with that process with him and trying to figure out exactly, uh, you know, what, what he's going to be looking for at different positions. Um, we have some thoughts, obviously. But we're going we're gonna to blend all that, and we'll get into free agency and get into the draft and start getting input from him, and we'll make some of those decisions down the road. Yeah, we lean on our coaching staff. Our coaches do a great job evaluating players. Uh, that's one thing I think that Coach Rivera's done a really good job of, putting a staff together of guys that know what they're looking at. Um, so we lean on those guys a lot. Eric will be very involved in the process. We definitely lean on him and Jack as coordinators to know what they want uh, with, with the, as far as uh, skill set um, and what they look for in certain players. So Eric will be very involved in that. Well, um, I think what's going on is I think some of the coaches are not coming. All of the general managers are here, as far as I know. All the personnel departments are here. This is really an event, uh, an opportunity for us to see these guys live. There's a lot of guys who you haven't seen and sit down and talk with these guys one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I don't know the whole you know, background of each why each coaching staff or each team made that decision. Um, frequently, that decision is made by a GM or an owner that says there's, no, there's not enough value for you to go, you know? Um, our coaches are, are, are all here, all participating. They're all involved in the interview process. We think there's value in that uh, for them being able to sit down and talk to these guys face to face. Um, we had a great interview with Brian Robinson last year, but we left that interview with some questions about, you know, the questions we want to ask Brian further. And we brought him into our building for a 30 visit 
We got answers to all those questions, and it worked out very well for us. So we think there's a lot of value in having the coaches involved in this process, especially the interview process. Yeah, I haven't spoken to Jalen Carter, and uh, I, I read the news, and I know as much as you as you do about that. Well, it's going to be pretty heavily investigated by the media and by you guys, I think. Uh, we'll, we'll track that, obviously. We have, a, we have a company that we work with on background investigations, and we'll work with that company. We have very, uh, very thorough analysis of these guys' backgrounds, especially any criminal activity or criminal behavior, things like that. I don't know what happened with him. I'm not saying he did anything that was wrong, because I don't know. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll know. We'll, we'll find out. Do you guys do that for, like, fourth, fifth round prospects as well? We do it for everyone. Everybody, yeah. So we do a very thorough background check on everybody. Yeah, I think it's something you've got to look at, uh, you know, more uh, extensively or look deeper into it than just what a player's numerical age is. You know, how much football did he play, you know? Did he play a ton of football? Is he a running back? Did he get 600, 700 carries? You know, those are the things that will, will concern you more than what his numerical age is. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll look at that. I think, you know, the NILs and the uh, transfer portal have changed college football as we know it. Um, a lot of people think that's, that's not good. Um, I don't know if it's good or bad. I do know one thing that's positive that came from it, though, is that we don't see as many guys who are going to be seventh round picks or free agents declaring for the draft now because they can go to their school. If their family doesn't have any money, they can earn some money at the school. If they're not happy with how they're being used or with their coaching staff, they can transfer it to a different school. So we're seeing a smaller number of guys that are coming out early, I think, for that reason. Um, and I think there is some benefit to, to those college players having opportunities, other options besides coming into the draft when they're not really ready for it. I won't get into any of the contract uh, talks that we have with our guys. Yeah, we evaluate that pretty thoroughly. It is really good tight end class, I believe. Uh, I think we have a really good group of tight ends, you know. Um, I think, you know, Logan Thomas has been a very good player for us in the past, as you know. Cole Turner had one of the best off seasons that I've had, that I've seen a young tight end have. And then he got injured in training camp and suffered some soft, soft uh, tissue injuries during the season. We didn't see fully what, what Cole is capable of, of, of doing, Cole Turner. Um, and then Amari. Uh, Armani, rather, uh, also as an undrafted free agent, a guy who moved to tight end last year, um, really showed some some very uh, intriguing flashes. And obviously, John Bates is a very complete guy as a blocker and as a receiver. Uh, and then we've got Curtis Hoskins, who's uh, who's uh, was on the injured reserve last year, who came off last year. We didn't activate him, but he is very very talented. So we've got a nice group of young pups out there that, that look pretty good. Do I think? Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to give some some credit to my old teammate Deion Sanders for shining light on black colleges and, and HBCUs. Uh, I think it was pretty incredible what he did down in Jackson in, at Jackson State in Jackson, Mississippi. Um, and you know, he's a guy that did it the right way. He was a high school coach. Uh, he went and became a college coach. Uh, he dominated at that level, and now he's moved on to, to Colorado. And I think he really shined a light on it on HBCUs. I'm from Tallahassee, Florida, so Florida A&M was a school I was very familiar with. I went to all their games when I was in high school. They offered me a scholarship. I ended up going to Florida State. But um, so I, my mom went to Florida A&M, as a matter of fact. So um, I, I, I really appreciate what he's been able to do for HBCUs, and uh, I think we're going to see more kids that are willing to go. HBCUs to play because that light's been shined on those schools now. They're getting more, more, uh, they're getting more games on television. They're more, much more visible than what they were four or five years ago. Take two 
Yeah, that's, there's still a lot of discussion about that. But we're working through our roster right now. One of the important things about the combine is an opportunity to see all of the young quarterbacks that are coming out too. And we'll have an opportunity to look at those as well as what's out there in free agency. So, uh, you know, Sam will have every opportunity to, to win that starting job. Uh, was very impressed with the way that he, he played and practiced last year. Obviously, very small sample. He only played in one game. But we got to see him the whole offseason. We got to see him all through training camp, uh, every week in practice. He has the skills that it takes to be a starter in this league, in my opinion. Yeah, well, Eric and I go way back. We've got probably 100,000 or so friends in common. He's, fr he's a fraternity brother of mine, Omega Sci-Fi. Um, so, you know, when I interviewed him, I, I was just trying not to piss him off, you know. <laughs> but, no, he, uh, we're so glad to have him. He's it, a guy that's been in three of the last four Super Bowls, had the number one offense in the league last year in terms of scoring. Um, just uh, as an offense coordinator, has accomplished a lot. Um, and our guys are really excited about it, too. Our team is excited about it. The whole building is, is excited to have him join us. Um, his press conference, I mean, Terry McLaurin was there. Jahan Dotson was there. Uh, Logan Thomas, a lot of our players showed up. They're excited about what he brings to the table and what he's going to be able to do for us offensively. Um, uh, his motivations, honestly, I'm just glad that we have him. I'm glad that he's a part of our football team. Uh, couldn't be happier to have him. Um, certainly appreciate Scott Turner, the things he was able to do for us, and um, he did some really good things for us. Uh, but we're really happy to have Eric. Yeah, well, I mean, I think you got to, one, take into consideration that probably most of you guys, I know I did, made some mistakes in college, you know? So you got to take that. But what kind of mistake was it, you know? And is it something that has been addressed? And is it something that the player has addressed? Or that we're, is it something that we're still concerned about? That's the big question for me. I think football character is really, really important, as, long, as well as personal character in terms of uh, our draft and adding guys to our football team. I've been to two Super Bowls, uh, one as a player, one as an executive, and both of those teams had outstanding character, the 1991 uh, Redskins, 2019 uh, 49ers, where we lost to Eric Bannaby, unfortunately. Um, but uh, I think the character is really important, but I think you have to go with, it with an understanding. These are typically, you know, teenage kids. If, if they made a mistake as a teenager, and if we condemn every single guy that did that, that's, that's on us, you know. Um, so you got to weigh everything um, and evaluate everything in the whole person, and that's, that's the way I look at it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, I don't know all the details of it. Uh, it certainly is a challenge for him. It's something that needs to be explained, uh, thoroughly explained. Something needs to be investigated uh, in terms of is this the first time this ever happened or is it, has it happened before, and, and, and is it something that can be, uh, that can be controlled? Yeah, well, you know, the one thing that I felt that they did a really good job of was just knowing the player profile of what they were looking for. Uh, and we're trying to do the same thing here uh, for different positions, what things are important, what attributes are really important for those positions to be successful. And you may find somebody like a George Kittle in the fifth round who has some of the attributes that you're looking for uh, in a tight end. And maybe there's some things uh, that kept him out of the first round. But if you know that he's going to fit for what you're doing offensively, he fits your scheme, he's going to fit into what you're doing and fit into your locker room, then you take that shot on a, on a player like, 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 like George. So I think they do a really good job of identifying guys that fit them, and that's what we're trying to do here. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.